welcome back and we're going to go through a couple more macros to give you even more ideas of things you can do. So some really simple ones. I have macros for specific plugins. That way I can quickly get to each of these plugins. For instance, JW Lua is really simple since I use that all the time. And that's just control F and then L for Lua. And it opens up JW Lua. A couple more macros you may wish to consider is in measures. And you can see I added a couple more measures. So there's multi-measure rests, great, and break. There's also lock selected measures. So for instance, that one is if I highlight two pages like that, control M, L, that locks it into one system. You can also insert measures like this. So we have control M, I to insert measures, then you can add whatever number you want. Or add measures to the end, which I have as A. So that's control M to A, and then I can add however many measures I want at the end, so like 50. And this piece is now a lot longer. Another one I have is in orchestration. This is for change pitches. This is a bit of a longer script in case you wish to look at it in more detail. Basically what this does is it runs the JW change pitches plugin. For instance, if you have a D, or I guess it's a C, and if I go up to plugins, JW plugins, I have change pitches. And then I can change a C to like a D, or maybe like a D to an F sharp, like that. And so all this macro does is it really speeds up the process so I don't have to hit change or close out of it. So I use control Q to D, and then it opens up the dialog box, and I can say F sharp to, I don't know, G. And you can also do partial measure regions with the plugin, although it'll give you a pop-up box, but I also have it take care of that pop-up box, like that. And the other thing is I have a ton of macros specifically for engraving. Again, some people use it as copying, but these are just ways that I can very, very quickly make this score look good. So for instance, if I wanted to add a score divider, I could either do it by hand by coming up here to scoring and arranging, and then it's score system divider. Or I can simply run this macro under control V engraving, and then D for divider. So control V for engraving, and then D for divider. I also have in general this macro stays open, uh, just so that way I can do many of these back to back to back. So for instance under control V, I have access to all these plugins. So I also have the lock selected measures in one system. I also have several for JW fit measures. So I can fit music to a fixed number of systems with E, and I can say, I don't know, five systems. Like that, and I'll evenly space it out. Or fit music, keep it to the same number of relative systems of R. Or of course, move dynamics up or down, keep them aligned, move staff up or down, reset them, show or unshow something. And this can be really, really helpful. And then there's also a reset subgroup that can basically, right now I'm still adding to this, but you can reset slurs. So if I had a slur here like that and there was some weird manual adjustments that don't look good, I can go back here and reset the slurs. And of course, close out of it is nice and simple. Then the one last macro I have, which is Control N, that'll actually just take me real quickly back to Keyboard Maestro. So if I ever need to create a new macro, Control N does that, and it just lives up here. Open Keyboard Maestro. And that's just to show you that you can actually use Keyboard Maestro to go back and forth between different applications, and you can do some really cool stuff like that. And then the last one, which I use all the time, is for the Simple Entry Repitch tool. Because what this one does is you may notice that whenever you enter Simple Entry, it always brings up this pop-up box. And I don't like that. So the Simple Entry Repitch tool macro, it automatically deletes that for me every single time I open up Simple Entry. And as you can see, all it does is it opens up the repitch tool, saves the mouth position like we've done all the time, and then this front window is always going to be that new box, and then it deletes it by hitting the X and then moves the mouse back. That way, as you were able to see before, the mouse flickers, but it always comes back to the same spot it started in. So hopefully that's some food for thought for more macros you can use and create in Keyboard Maestro. And the next lesson, we're going to wrap everything up, so I can't wait to finish with you. And I'll see you then.